Hey, it's Pauline, and today I want to talk about the difficult subject of mother-in-laws. And some people are blessed and they just have the most amazing mother-in-law that just totally gels with their personality and their family life and it just works out great. And then the others is the mother-in-law can be a really tricky, sticky situation. So I think there's probably maybe three groups of people who are watching this video or searching for this video or found this video. There's probably a group who says, um, forget my mother-in-law, I can't stand her. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do to improve this relationship. She's crazy. She's a psycho. Um, then maybe there's another group that says, I am willing to learn. I know I need to honor my mother-in-law. The Bible talks about honoring our parents. Um, my husband really likes her and would appreciate it if I get along with her. I just see there being no human leeway possible that this could ever happen. Then a third group says, I am going to try to learn. Um, I don't know how it's possible, but there must be a way I'm going to try. If you're one of the first two groups, I, I don't know this video will help you. It probably won't. Um, there has to be, and I speak as someone who had a difficult mother-in-law relationship. So I think there has to be just a certain amount of, you're willing to try and figure this out. Um, and that, that, there, that you believe it's possible. Uh, maybe you don't know how, maybe you can't foresee how, but you believe it's possible. And you're going to f figure out and try. And if, even if this video doesn't help you exactly, you're going to continue looking and figuring this out because it's possible. So that's where um, the last group, the people who, who believe that it's possible, and I'm, I'm trying to figure that out, this out. It's really hard, but I think it's possible. I'm speaking to you. Um, the Bible says, honor your parents um, in the land that you're living in. So you may dwell long and prosper. This is the first commandment with a promise. So this is one of the Ten Commandments, is to honor our parents. Now, honor does not, especially when you're an adult, doesn't necessarily mean obey. So if your mother-in-law is telling you to do things or telling you how to raise your children in a way that you don't believe God is leading you or the way that is right, then you are not called to obey her. Um, if your mother-in-law is telling you to do different things with your house or how to clean it or how to do the dishes, um, you don't have to obey her, but you do have to honor her. So there's the little difference there. Um, but there's also the bitterness that can grow in your heart. So and I, I'm well aware of all of those things. So let me say, this is you, I can relate to you. Um, the quest for me really began with Naomi and Ruth. And if you haven't read the book of Ruth, start with that story. So Ruth and her sister-in-law, well, let's just start with Naomi. Naomi was the mother and she was married to her husband and she had two sons. Ruth was married to one of the sons and I forget her name because she's not remembered in the Bible hardly at all. That second girl, I don't know her name, she was married to the other son. Well, all the men died. The husband died and the two sons died and all the ladies are left. And Ruth is remembered in the Bible because she chose to follow Naomi and to go with Naomi where your people are, your people will be my people, your God will be my God. And she followed her. Even though Naomi told her, no, 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 I have no more sons to give you as husbands. Go, go on your own way. But Ruth was devoted to Naomi. The other girl, the chick, she was like, okay, see you later. And for the longest time I read that story, I'm like, I would so be that girl. I would just go. I would leave. I'd be like, all right, I'm going back to my family where everything is familiar to me. And they speak my language and they know me. And I'll go back to what I know instead of having to do it your way. Um, and so, but... Ruth is the one that's remembered. Ruth is the one that um, became like the great grandmother of Jesus, um, like so she, or I'm sorry, of David, and she's remembered in the lineage of Jesus. So this woman, all because of her devotion to follow Naomi, and everyone saw like she was a Moabite, so she wasn't a Jew, but all the people saw how amazing she was, um, and, and and wow. She's following, like, she's doing something extraordinary. It wasn't normal. There was nothing probably sinful or wrong. The girl was listening to Naomi. The other sister, she went and went back to her own people. But Ruth did something extraordinary. That means extraordinary. Out of the ordinary, she was devoted to her mother-in-law. And because of that, she was blessed. She took care of her mother-in-law, and she was very, very, very blessed. And she got a new wonderful husband. Read the story yourself. You'll love it. So... How can I find that kind of Ruth-like devotion, even a little bit, a morsel of a bit, enough to please my husband or enough to feel like I'm honoring, you know, enough to even have peace in my household with my mother-in-law. So 
I'm going to share some things that are somewhat, you know, for me, and maybe it will help you. And then I'm going to share some generalities that will work for everyone. So first off, um, what worked for me was to set boundaries. And I did this with my own parents too. So we eat very healthy. Um, and that's how we keep our kids from getting sick and also the Lord's graciousness. So praise the Lord that we stay very healthy and well. Um, and he keeps us healthy and well, but also I have seen the correlation, like even just immediately, like how I feel, like if I go eat junk food, like immediately how it makes my body feel, or if I stay up late and eat like sugary things, I'm going to get a runny nose the next day. Like it's just, I'm going to get a cold. The cure for the common cold for me is so simple. Take care of your body, sleep well, and don't eat badly. You eat, eat well. So for us, it made financial sense. It made peace of mind sense, like so many things to just cut out um, bad foods. So we just eat healthy and from the beginning our kids have never had candy like the kids have never had sodas It's just how we operate in our family. We don't drink soda. We don't do junk food That's just us and I make all sorts of yummy treats. You can go on my blog and see the recipes I do, but they're healthy. So um, I've had both sets of parents try at some point to sneak the kids junk food like super feels disrespectful and then also like it's could be potentially dangerous like they get really sick so with both of them like I just laid the law down and told them like look this is how they're going to stay well if you want to see them you're going to have to listen to this rule like you can't be sneaking stuff like that's just not gonna work for me and that was all it took was one conversation now if you again your situation may be different but I'm just gonna tell you again that third person mindset where we had the three people I talked about in the beginning if this doesn't exactly work for you or you've tried boundaries, try in a different way. Um, try in ways, tr try something else is what I'm saying. It's always about trying. So for me, having boundaries set, clear boundaries worked. Communication. When I felt like my rights were being violated, um, I let them know. Like this for me is a boundary and um, any relationship, you have to work that way. You have to be able to set boundaries and say, this is what I need for me to work, to function, to feel happy. So this is kind of what I need. If you cannot step over that, please. Uh, secondly, we did for a time, um, limit time too, uh, with certain family members. Uh, it can, it can become like, they have a lot of it feels like a black rain cloud is always following them, you know, like things are always going wrong. And then you pour your time into them and help them and do all these things and they either A, don't listen to you or they find a new way to have a new black rain cloud. So it was just like for me, that was the second thing I needed to do was withdraw a little bit. Like not spend so much time with certain family members. So we would create environments where it was very fun and pleasing to see them. Um, you just have to some point like not pour so much time into people is, is how I felt. Um, there are, I've got six children who are dying for my time, not dying, but love my time, listen to me, are eager to listen. And there's a whole world of people, even here on YouTube, who are eager to listen. And, and, and so for me, pouring my time into people who weren't doing the things I said, like taking the advice, taking the corrections, like just help, like not listening. Those are people that I pull away from. And so we'll see them at family gatherings. We'll totally go over and do like um, fun meals together, watch a movie together, like have fun things, but keep it very light. And then um, for me, if the conversation starts to get real rain cloudy, I said, tell me something positive that happened to you today. Cause I feel like everything you've said today is really negative. So tell me something that's been good in your life. And so I will change the conversation to keep it positive. Um, because some people just are bent towards little black rain clouds and negativity following them everywhere they go. So that's the second thing. So create the boundaries Two, set the terms and the tone of your relationship is what I would call that last one is set the terms and the tone. You dictate the tone. You do not let them dictate it. And also the time. And so that's something you and your husband have to agree on, but just say that might be some communication like, Hey, your mom comes over every single Tuesday. Can we set some boundaries with her and just say, Hey, instead, you know, we'll come over to your house or, you know, again, maybe her house isn't an option. Be that third person who's figuring out a solution. The last two points are generalities that will work for everyone. If you haven't already, commit this to prayer, like daily even. If this is something that's weighing on you heavily, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it. Like really commit it to the Lord and Lord, open my heart, give me guidance. Um, now, if you're dealing with super bitterness, which I promise I've been there, um, I can tell you right now uh, that I have overcome that like 
praise the Lord. And it's not of me, but of him. And that here's what's the crazy thing is, is nothing has changed on my mother-in-law's end. Um, there's what has changed is my heart and my attitude. And I'll tell you how I did that. I changed my heart and my attitude with gratitude. I started writing down on a physical piece of paper. And if you miss all the rest of the suggestions I gave you, um, prayer and gratitude are the two things that you need to start right now. <laughs> I started writing down on paper the things I was grateful for my mother-in-law about. And you should make this a practice in your daily life. If you haven't practiced gratitude, it's so important to write down the things that you're grateful for. Um, and even what you're grateful for, the future things like that you know are coming, that you're asking the Lord in prayer, that, that you know, you know, like, thank you Lord for this, like I know this is coming and I, I know that, that you're coming back. And so there's so many things you can be grateful for. Now, present, past, future. So many things you can write down. But regarding my mother-in-law and yours, sometimes maybe you just need to start out with, and this was me, I'm grateful that you gave birth to my husband. That's it. I'm grateful that my mother-in-law gave birth to my husband. Like, I couldn't even think of anything, but at least I could say that. Like, you married this man. You obviously thought he was, he, he hung the moon, right? Like, when you married him, you thought he was wonderful. And in my, my relationship, my husband thinks his mother is wonderful. And so for me, to connect the dots, I think you're wonderful. Even though we, you know, we're married, we have our fights, we have our differences, but I mean, you're an amazing man. And somehow you see this woman as being amazing, and yet I don't know how. I'm going to give that over to the Lord and just start writing gratitude. And I just wrote, I'm thankful for you giving birth. And then as time went on, I was able to maybe write two things. I'm thankful that you gave birth. I'm thankful that my mother-in-law gave birth to my husband. Thank you, Lord, for my mother-in-law because she loves my children. She loves my children, like totally with a total devotion, like they give her joy. I started with you know, just very brief things and you don't ever write down anything that's negative. Just keep it positive. In time, your brain will retrain to see the positives and let go of the negatives. Then with the boundaries you set, um, it really becomes, it becomes the forefront. And the last thing, I didn't actually mention this as one of the first things that this is, might not pertain to you, but it did for me was jealousy. And just be aware of that and know that um, for me it was like my mother-in-law would need something fixed and somehow she could get you know it fixed way faster than I could at my house and so that to me felt like there was a preferential treatment and I think that um, that's not I, know, I know that wasn't the case I think it's very much my husband desiring to honor his mother and take care of his mother she lives alone and um, you may have a different situation where you feel very much the same, that somehow your husband is giving your mother-in-law more preferential treatment. And just know that's not the case. If he wanted to be with his mother full time, he would have just stayed with her. Like he married you for a reason. He loves you, his heart is for you, but he also is being torn between work, his own desires, his desire to please his wife, and his desire to honor his mother. And so there's all these different dynamics. So kind of set that one aside and just focus on the prayer and the gratitude and loving your husband and be having a great relationship with your husband. And in time, it worked out for me and I really think it will for you too. So keep being that third type of person, the kind of person that says, I'm not sure how this is possible, but I'm going to find a way and I'm gonna figure it out. Be that person and God will honor that and he will bless you and he will bless your family so abundantly. It's the first commandment that promise. Remember, he's gonna bless you for your efforts, for your, for your effort to, to honor your mother-in-law. So I hope this has helped you and I hope this has blessed you. Go out and live life abundantly and I'll talk to you next week.